it's an honor for me to stand up here, uh, me amongst all the people that fought for the freedoms that we have today to walk into this building called the church. Amen. And if we could have this much on Sunday, whew, we'd have to build, have it. <laughs> build on to it. But uh, I'm a Baptist, but we're not taking up collection. I'm just <laughs> jealous. I hate to say that, but we're not going to do it. Now, would you please turn down your phones, please? And before I open up with prayer, I would just like to say what a joy it is to be around people that volunteered to serve their country. And the military and the law enforcement, you don't get a choice of what you're going to do when the battle starts. You're trained to do something that you don't even know you can do. I come from a family, uh, five of us, and we have a 180 years in as of today in my immediate family. And, And we got two uh, nephews waiting to serve their 20 out. So we'll have over 200 years at that time. Amen. And none of us went in to save the world. But we went in because we felt it was a duty. And that's what's missing in our country today. Uh, uh, people that wants to serve their country. They want to take all they can get, but not put anything back. And as me and my brother and sisters would get together, none of us would ever brag about whatever we did or what we was going to do. We were just so thankful to be together. And what a thankful I am to be part of this here today. And uh, there's not a word, there's no words we can say to you vets and to those that lost their loved ones that uh, had friends, uh, loved ones lost their life. There's no words for us to say. But our heart says it all. That we really appreciate and thank all the military people. You know that a lot of people in the military uh, lose their life in training missions and all. But when you go into the military, you're called to serve. And uh, it's, it's not to ask why, but go ahead and do it. And so as we go here today, you know, none of, there's not enough money for someone to go put their life on the line. There's just not enough money. And it just comes natural to, the, uh, to those that have been trained in the military and the law enforcement. Let's not forget the law enforcement. They keep us safe here and the first responders. So the next time you see one, just tell them thank them. And as we go to prayer, uh, God already knows what we're going to ask. God already knows what he's going to do. God has blessed this country many, many times, and he will bless it again. But I don't see everybody repenting like it talks about in his word. But that's an individual thing. It's not the whole world repent. It's your peace depends on your repentance. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for the freedoms this country has. And I pray, Lord, that there's many, many, many more are willing to go to the battle to keep this country free. Jesus, you set us free from sin by dying on the cross. And many Americans have given us the freedom to be in a building called a church when they died on the battlefields. Many lost, lost their parts of their body. And Heavenly Father, many uh, uh, lost some of uh, their, their thoughts and their mind. And, and many a mother and dad is still crying today over the loss of a loved one. But Heavenly Father, we know that this country that you gave us, we have to fight for it. We need to stand up for it. We're not standing up as we should uh, as Christian men and women. We need to stand up for this country. We need to stand up for all those that are facing hardships. So, Heavenly Father, my prayer is for the families of those that have lost loved ones. That Because you said, Jesus, you said, you are the comforter. You are the comforter, not me. You're the comforter, Jesus. And you said you was going to send another one, the Holy Ghost, to comfort those that are in need. So the families that have lost loved ones, we pray for them today, Lord, for peace to come over them. And we pray for those that have lost parts of their body, Heavenly Father, that, that they will get all, all that uh, they need necessary to have a good life, Lord, a good life. 
And, and Lord, let us all be thankful that we walked in this here building today. We walked in, Lord, and that's something to be thankful for. We had the freedoms. We didn't have to hide. We come boldly. So the next time somebody says, well, why do we need to go uh, give God thanks for this freedom? That's why we can come freely into here. We don't have to hide we come boldly, so when we leave here today, let us go boldly thanking the men and women that have uh, and families that have sacrificed so that we can have this freedom. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. And again, we don't have the words, but you do, Jesus, and you have the means. You're the miracle worker, and we ask for a miracle for America, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, my name is Kenny Lawman. I'm the commander of Post 4299. And uh, it just feels like old home week here. Everybody looking through there. I see all kind of people I know. We had a son buried right over here on this side of the cemetery. Grandparents back here. Uh, wow, what a great place. And I'm so glad to see so many of you here today who, uh, as people are trying to say celebrate, this is not a celebration. This is a remembrance of the ones that have lost their lives Amen. fighting for this country. And they've dedicated countless, countless things just to be a part of this great country of ours. I got a little speech here my quartermaster printed out for me. He edited it down from 15 pages. <coughs> To four, so uh, we'll go from there. And I appreciate him a lot because he, uh, some of the words he put, some of these words are terrible, but anyway, we'll go through it as, as we can. Uh, this was stated Memorial Day 2022. It is for good reason that we gather together today with countless other Americans across the nation and across the world. Regardless of race, creed, or political persuasion, we gather in unified and solemn remembrance to honor the sacrifices of those who answered their nation's call and who have willingly laid down their lives for our freedoms. Despite the hardships of the past year, the men and women of America's armed forces who have sacrificed and given everything they have, including their lives, for our safety and freedoms we enjoy, deserve to be remembered. We come together to honor and pay our respect for those lost on the front lines of battle. This Memorial Day, we join together, we remember our service members' names, their faces, and their service legacy so that their sacrifices are not forgotten. Those of us who gather today to honor fallen comrades have cherished memories of friends we shared a foxhole or our meals with. Incredulous is the quick passage of time we reflect on the brief moments we had with those now absent friends. Even though it may have been many years since that day we bid farewell, we still revisit the times of shared laughter, the tears, and the expectations that we all had for future as though it were only yesterday. Their hopes and dreams and plans were never fulfilled because their lives, their time on earth was much too brief. As we take this day to give thanks to them and quietly contemplate their ultimate sacrifice, we realize how remarkably inadequate our attempt really is to pay tribute to them. We commit ourselves to diligently remind present and future generations of Americans that there is no freedom without bravery, and those we honor today were brave when it counted the most. They were our fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters, and friends. Do you remember them? The next door neighbor, the kids who lived down the block, they were the high school quarterbacks, cheerleaders, and class clowns. From every race, creed, and color, they came from every corner of our great nation, from other countries as well. Together, they defended, protected, and advanced the cause of freedom. Generation after generation has been fortunate enough to reap the benefits paid for those by 
believe that freedom is worth fighting for, and if necessary, dying for. Memorial Day is a rare day of opportunity to give thanks to all that we've been blessed with. The courage possessed by men and women who are, we are honoring today is some, something that it cannot be taught. Their willingness to put country first is what truly makes America the home of the brave, and that is what this very special day is all about. Being thankful that such brave men and women have lived and to pay tribute to their heroic patriots who bravely rose up and fought for something greater than themselves, protecting a home to which they never returned. And as I read some of those words, I look at it. I'm sorry, Chris, I had to say it. I, I look at you two guys and my heart just breaks for you. Randy, same for you, lost brother. But I knew these guys. Uh, it's hard. It's hard for the parents and brothers, but it's still hard for us veterans to realize that who gave the sacrifice so that we may have these freedoms to have this gathering. And I'm going to turn it over now to Father Tom McHenry, and we're going to have a couple exhibitions, uh, well, not an exhibition, but a couple of readings about the folding of the flag and uh, I forgot what the empty chair. Empty chair. We will have those readings, and uh, then we'll conclude the ceremony. We'll go outside, and we'll have taps played, and we'll just observe that. And then we'll go to the fellowship hall. Right. I'm Tom McHenry. I'm the chaplain of Post 4299, and we will begin our sir, our description of the meaning of the folding of the flag. Do you open it all the way first and then fold? We can. Yeah, that's what I, that's. I just don't have arms long enough. <laughs> the first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world, not to have been in vain and shall not be forgotten. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country. In the words of the immortal Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. And it is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through these armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered the valley of the shadow of death that we may see the light of day. And this fold is made to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to the women of our nation, 
For it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the characters of the men who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to Father, for he too has given up his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since she was first born. We fold from the stripes toward the stars, for whereas the stripes represent the 13 original colonies that founded our republic, they are embodied in the 50 sovereign states represented by the stars, so that the stars cover the stripes. The eleventh fold is for the eyes of a Hebrew citizen, representing the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon, and in their eyes the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. The twelfth fold is in the eyes of a Christian citizen, representing the emblem of eternity and glorifying in their eyes God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. When the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, In God We Trust. <coughs> After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones. And they, followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, have preserved for us the rights, the privileges, and the freedom which we enjoy today. I'm uh, Jim Rhodes, quartermaster of Post 4299. I'll be reading The Empty Chair. We have gathered here to share and to honor, to remember those who sat in that empty chair. So let's take a few moments to contemplate why this chair is empty. <coughs> What was the veterans' fate? Were they at Valley Forge with Washington? Did they die amid the first flames of America's fight for freedom and in every war and conflict since? This empty chair before us renders honor to a veteran, a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, an uncle, or a friend. Let's give thanks to those who stood there at ground took the fall. They stood for the red, white, and blue. By their actions, and thanks to them, we live in freedom. They could truly have done no more as they gave their lives for you and me. While even today, members of our armed forces must maintain our heritage. To keep our nation free, let us pledge from this day forth to honor the sacrifice they bore we see the chair is empty, yet in our hearts we know it was once occupied by a member of our armed forces. All they ask is for us to love our country, live with pride, and never forget those who died to keep us free. That is why that chair is empty. That concludes this part of the program. Kenny, we you want to go out for taps?